I'll shut up now, talking of shutters, <laughs> and I will sing a bit of uh, Chicago All That Jazz. Oh, Let's hope that that yeah. Yeah. Please, please. 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 Hello. Hey. Afternoon. Ooh, How is everybody? Friday. How is everyone? <laughs> oh, glad oh. it's Friday. Can't I know. Wait. Can't wait. It's been a long week. I know, but I never know what day it is. Do you? These weekends, they come and then they've gone and then it's Friday yeah. again. Yeah, it's like, and it's Crazy. bank holiday again. That's right. Yes. It's, yeah, and it doesn't seem like a bank holiday, does it? It's like you wake no. up and think, what day is it? <laughs> I thought every day is a bank holiday, really. I know. <laughs> oh. Sounds like a musical, Harriet. It does. Yeah. <laughs> when will it change? Lucky I'm in a anyway. Seattle foyer then. <laughs> I know, it's difficult, isn't it? But do you know what, yeah. girls? I was talking to a friend of mine who's having a baby and she was deciding what to call her little girl. Mm. And everybody has such weird names now, don't they? They can't be called Joan or Jill sure. and, um, or, you know, or anything like that. Now, and I was thinking about Keely because I, I insisted on calling her Tallulah. But Ooh. 35 yeah. years ago, Tallulah, everybody went, oh, can't call her Tallulah. <laughs> Tallulah? That's so unfair. I said, okay. So I settled on Lark. L-A-R-K. Lark? Lovely. Now, that's an old Victorian name. That's everywhere. They go, oh, what a Lark. Oh, she's a Lark. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so then I called her Keely because... Uh, Ken was Irish, and it's it, you know it means the beautiful one in I in Ireland. So, so I settled on that. But I just thought of all the lovely names it used to be. I had two. My my grandma's sisters were called Dolly and Polly, <laughs> and, and there was a Phyllis. <laughs> and I thought I love Dolly and Polly, and they've come back, beautiful. haven't they? Yeah. yeah. And then there's Esme. I love Esme because you won't remember an actress called Esme Cannon. But Esme Cannon was one of my favourite actresses, and I love the name Esme. So anyway, this girl oh. went to and said, "No, I don't think I'll take any notice of you." <laughs> <laughs> but the best one is my mother. My mother's maiden name was Bertle, which is B-I-R-T-L-E, and my grandma was going to call her Myrtle. <laughs> Myrtle, Myrtle. That is so brilliant. Myrtle, Myrtle. <laughs> she didn't. Oh, <laughs> brilliant. Just got joy. Oh, do you it. have names? Uh, Dee, tell me about your names in your family. Well, strangely enough, um, my family is from the world of weird names because um, <laughs> <laughs> we you invented them, actually. Right yeah. Well, first of all, I was born in the, in the Deep South, and so I was nicknamed by my grandfather, Dixie, which, which stuck, which oh. is what then I abbreviated it to D. And... Um, because I didn't like it at school. You know, can you imagine at a convent, the nuns going, Dixie? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and one nun actually said, what sort of name is that? Because I was educated here. Um, and then I called my daughter Sid. So my mother loved Sid Charisse, but actually my ah. grandfather's name was Sid as well. So <laughs> we called her Sid. And 32 years ago, like you, darling, Cherry, Chalo uh, like, like Cholula Bankhead, Sid Charisse was a bit yeah. of a weird name. So yeah. I gave her a, a, like a proper name, Olivia, afterward, but she's never actually used that. It's always been Sid, C-Y-D. Well, is it Sydney? Is it Sydney then? It's actually Sid, C-Y-D. Oh, Sid, okay. Like right, Sid okay. Therese. But yeah. my grandfather was Sid, S-I-D. So we, so whenever anyone said, why is it Sid? I said, oh, it's, you know, it's after her great-grandfather. Yeah, of course. Which it, yes, of course, which it wasn't. And then as, when Sid got to about two or three, she tried to say granny to my mother, my mother didn't want to be called Granny, so she actually called, she couldn't say Granny, but she said Annie. So she actually called her Annie for the rest of her life. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Which was great. Yeah. So I always referred to my mother to her as Annie. And then my grandmother was called Beatrice, and my grandfather would call her Beat. All right, Beat. Beat. <laughs> <laughs> It's weird, so, isn't it? It's weird. It really is weird. So yes, I'm actually from that sort of um, world of extraordinarily weird strange. Well, I, I, come, yeah. I, come from, I come because I, well, I've got a sort of mixture of names. But my mother, whose name was Mary, who came from Vienna on the Kindertransport, but her real name was Mitzi. 
Oh, oh. Little. I love wow. Yeah, isn't that the most lovely name? I so like that. Beautiful. Yeah, she was always called Mary. And then my grandparents on my father's side. So my grandpa, my, my grandpa was called Henry, and my grandma was called Rachel. And she um, she was my mama because I couldn't say grandma. So I called her mama. But then she oh. had all these sisters. So it's Rachel, Evelyn and Florrie. Oh, oh Florrie. Yeah, I Florrie and Althea. And her brother's names were Harold. And, um, and my father was called Arnold, but he was known as Eddie. And my name, <laughs> Debbie, of course, I'm not Debbie Arnold because I was born. My mother named me after her mother, who was Jeanette. So I'm Jeanette Deborah who is known as really? Debbie. And then when uh, Kira was born, I wanted to call her Stephanie because I wanted to call her Stevie. And the gynecologist who took her out said, you can't call her Stephanie. It's an horrible name. He said, do you have, a, do you have another name for her? And I said, well, I like the name Kira. And he said, that's who she is. She's Kira. Wow. So that's Kira. And I wanted to call Talia, if she was a boy, I wanted to call her Ethan. Because of 30 something, do you remember the program 30 something? Yes. And yeah. there, was a, there was a boy in that called Ethan. There was, yes. And I absolutely, Talia said, I'm so glad I'm not a boy. <laughs> the most awful name. But, but Talia, I, actually, when I was pregnant, I dreamt, uh, I dreamt about her and she said, my name is Talia and I'm coming. So that's why she's called Talia. Wow. 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 That's amazing. Anyway, Harriet, That's what about your names? Well, my name's my my grandpa um, had seven sisters, and they were Dolly, oh, wow. Glory, Gertie. I can't remember them all, but it's all that all the same. Oh, I love sort of it. Name. Gertie. And seven of them, Lovely. Gertie, Gertrude, obviously, um, and one day I'll get them all. And um, when <laughs> there was, he had, um, as I said, seven sisters. And when he was born, the doctor came out to his father and said you have another girl and um he fainted because they were twins there was the boy and then there was the girl another girl so he fainted but um i called my children after my grandpa um and his his jack and then my grandma's middle name was florence so i called my daughter florence um but she's known that she only isn't answers to the name flossy so there's jack and flossy um but i, like I love flossy. that sort of heritage of names yes I so do so, I. Yes. somebody did say um thought means little wood and then somebody rather rudely said thicket um so <laughs> thank god they I've never said thicket never got over that, <laughs> got over that yet. Mm. and my grandmother my mother and myself all have the same middle name amelia and as does my daughter so that's gone down four generations oh, lovely I that's love a lovely name, name. Mm. yeah i love it and of course today is dress up friday and i'm in a little scarf and a little, oh, she slipped down, and a lovely little top that uh, Lavoie gave me for my birthday. Happy oh, days. So, who's next? <laughs> Deborina. Deborina, well, actually, um, Dee and I, when we were away on our little jaunt, we really? found this fantastic uh, vintage <laughs> shop. So, and I, look, can you, can you, can you see? Oh. That oh, that's so nice. Don't undo it. Oh, she's, oh. oh my goodness. Oh, <laughs> People control. will pay good money. Yes, mm. and it's a, it's a lovely zip. It's a lovely zip that comes up and down. So I'm wearing that with a pair of little earrings, Beautiful. of course. So that is that is my um, dress up Friday. Dee, what have you got on from the fabulous vintage the shop? The same we thing. Into? Well, I've actually got a dress. Do you remember? And it was really not expensive at all, but it's like a 70s dress. So I'll just show you very quickly. Very. Mm. Oh, it's lovely. got a lovely detail and it's lovely and fluffy. Very you. And, um, very it's you. Quite yeah, very, very lovely. And it's actually um, very flattering because it sort of comes out and covers all the multitudes that we, we want that. to disguise. We like that, yes. What's that on and, your head? Oh, this is a little hat that I put together um, because I, I suddenly thought, oh my gosh, I haven't got anything to wear on my head. And my hair was a bit... Mm. So I just mm. did a little jush. And it's so gorgeous, it's very easy to do. Yes, very easy to do. Very but good, very good. Sherry, you look lovely in, in lovely in colours. In pink. Well, uh, Pretty in pink. Because, it, because the weather has been so horrendous and I'm getting very down about it, I thought if you wear pinks and vibrant colours, at least it makes you feel as though we've had a summer. And we're now, yeah. uh, somebody put on facebook yesterday it's 18 um weekends until christmas day oh my god and I, I put that on. Oh. what is that 
that? Why do people do that? I can't bear Why it. Why did you say that? That's horrendous. That's awful. Oh, horrible. Oh, Harriet, we need to cheer us up, Harriet. You can cheer us I up. Will. Who's coming on? I, I'm going to cheer you up right now because the star of musical theatre, Rhea Jones, is flying into the nest right Yay. now. Hi, Hello. darling. Hello. 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 Hi, Rhea. Hi, Welcome to our nest, you. my darling. How are you in Wales? I'm... I'm really good, thank you. Really, really good. Can, all things considered, today's yeah. a positive good day. Fantastic. Is How it? have you been I doing? I like Fridays. Them? I think Fridays you feel you've got through another week, so yes. It's yes. true. You do. So, so darling, how have you been doing? What have you been doing? What are, new things have you been doing in this crazy lockdown time? New things? Well, learning how to work Zoom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A bit more tech. I know a little bit more technical with like garage band and trying to oh. find out the best lighting. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and I think it's funny, it's because I think we became so caught up with social media and things like that. We, we forgot how to chat to people and I'm actually talking more to people now than I have in years. And I think that's been a real positive thing because I just feel I want to connect with somebody and rather than text all the time, just like this, even though it's still over the, over the internet, it's lovely to just chat. Yeah, you know? yeah. absolutely. I haven't done that for a long time. So when I'll you be were... on the phone for like two hours to somebody. <laughs> when you were in Paris, what were you doing in Paris, the wonderful? Well, I've done uh, two shows there now. First time I did 42nd Street at the Chatelet, Theatre Chatelet. And yeah. then the last yeah. time, most recent, I was at Beautiful Theatre just on the Champs Elysees called the Theatre Marigny. And I did Adelaide, Miss Adelaide in Guys and Dolls. Yes. Oh, just so. when I was doing MAME up in Manchester, you were at. What were you doing? I was at in the Man Royal Exchange yeah. in Gypsy. Gypsy. Yes. Exactly. Yes. I remember. Fabulous. Absolutely yeah. sensational. And, and I believe later on, when we've had a little chat, you might give us a little tune. I think I might. Ooh, of, course I, yeah. of course I will. But who's wow. an excuse these days? Any chance I get. I open the <laughs> fridge, I do 10 minutes. <laughs> I, no, uh, Rhea, I've got a little message for you from oh, one of my bestest friends, which is a man called Nigel Ellicott. Oh, I, and love I believe him. you did your first pantomime with him. And I think you might have been 16, were you? I think I was 15. I'll tell you a quick little story. Well, a couple of stories. I'll try and be quick. I'm Welsh. Okay. So we, we tend to, you know, over, over, uh, yeah. <laughs> over exaggerate. But no, seriously, <laughs> I actually um, was part of a talent competition at the Fourth oh. Call Pavilion Theatre. Oh. And one of the um, judges was uh, a producer and director, he's not with us sadly anymore, we'll called Charles Vance. Yeah. Yes. And I, I won the competition, but then found out that there was an age limit and I was too young, so I was disqualified. Oh, oh no! So I was, yeah, so I was 15, I was quite young and I was a bit upset, you know, and Charles Vance came back to the dressing room afterwards and said, you know, it's such a shame, but um, would you like to play Cinderella in the panto this year at the theatre? And it was a professional panto, you know, my first biggie. And I went, oh my God, I'd love to. And that's how I got that job. And Nigel Alicott was one of the ugly sisters. Oh. Of Robin. Oh. Robin. And I always remember, I was so green and naive and I was in my dressing room and I started whistling. Nigel came in from the next dressing room, like ran in, and he really, Gave me a right telling off about whistling. Maybe go outside the door, turn around three times, come in and swear. I was terrified. But from that day to this, that day to this, if anyone ever whistles, he's in my head, and I just yeah. Now, now for for our viewers, Maria, I must I must tell you this. They do you know the reason behind that? I think it's to do with the uh, the flying, isn't it? The flying, yeah. The and that always. Well, apparently, apparently, many many years ago, what happened was that a ballerina was on the stage and somebody whistled in the dressing room, and it meant that the, somebody pulled the flies, and then they the scenery went on her oh, head, and she was killed. Really? So that's oh, where, was... apparently that is where this tradition comes from. So it's not that we're crazy actors and don't yeah. believe in whistling in a dressing room. It means that yeah. whistling could make yeah, the fly. Yeah. The, the, that's what they used to do. To also, make the flies. can I just say the point of the flies and the whistling was that the sailors used to work the flies and they always used to, like on board ship, they Somebody would call the sails two whistles. So the only reason that it wasn't the people in the theater, it was always flymen were always sailors who pulled up all the scenery 
and the ah, flies were at the bit at the top of the theatre and, and you would do it all by whistling as you would on board ship. So that was also why it wasn't a theatre tradition, it was those sailors who had well, created course, that whistling. Oh. Exactly. The ropes as well. Exactly. The ropes that's what the they did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's... Oh, I love and stories Ria, like that. Wow. And Ria, we have to yeah. also mention our best friend, Andrew Robley, too. Oh, oh, we yes. all know Andrew. We all know Andrew. <laughs> the best friend yes. to manage this. <laughs> Andrew we love you. We helped. love you. We love you, Andrew. He needs we to hear that. Oh, we love you, Andrew. Absolutely. He must come on. Let's have him on. He'll see yes, he us he oh, Yeah, but also, Aria, he met, and Nigel mentioned your dogging. Oh, Dottie, she's mean? sleeping on the sofa now until the postman comes. Hopefully, he won't come today. <laughs> There'll be no bills. So she's and, sleeping quietly on the sofa. Oh. And just a and very Rhea, quick who else, story. Who else do we all know, Ria? Well, I was just going to say as well, um, Nigel's brother, Vivian Ellicott, yes. gave me my first professional musical gig, and that was Godspell. How funny. Oh, oh really? really? Yeah. Brilliant. I played, I played Robin, um, and I sang Day by Day, and we were at the um, oh, I love Kenneth, Moore Theater, Kenneth Moore Theatre in Ilford yes. first, where Vivian was for years. Yes. And then we went to the Lyceum Theatre in Crewe, Barry Stacey. Do any of you remember Barry? Yeah, oh, yes. Yes. Yes darling daughter he was there then so that was my first ever professional and i was still 15 here's the postman wait for it wait for it <laughs> oh, oh oh not so bad today oh, 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 thank you thank you sometimes Are my mail in shreds dotty thank you good Rhea. Are you Good old yeah. Dottie. Dottie. <laughs> Is there also you... Hilary O'Neill? Oh, sorry, Hilary oh. O'Neill. Yes, the lovely Hilary O'Neill. Yeah, yeah. had a nice. Yes, I think there. all of yes. us. Look, you know, so many people that we all know. So, hello, Hells as well. She rang. Actually, I need to ring her because she rang me the other day. So, uh, but <laughs> the thing is, I want to talk to you about about Dottie as well, because oh my, uh, she's my we're... joy. She... She's kept me going through this period. Oh, we are, do we are Dottie. They do. Can you tell us about her? When did you? How long have you had her? She's six and a half years old. We rescued her at three months old. We actually knew the people and sort of no fault of their own. They just weren't used to looking after and keeping a dog. And of course, when you yeah. first get a puppy, they need to train. They need to be trained yeah. and everything. Yes. She wasn't. There's no in her tail through stress. Anyway, we got her and... Um, Oh gosh, um, and the year before I'd had breast cancer, so I'd had a year oh. out of out of um, the business for all the treatment, chemo, radio, everything you get. So it was yeah. she was my she was my gift. She, I really believe she came at the right time because oh. she just opened yes. my heart. And um, yes. yeah, she was my gift from getting through that. And it also made me more social. You know, every day I go out for a walk. Even Walking, now, you know, really it's important. so good. You're at, you know, they, they keep you going through through lockdown as well because that's your exercise as well. Yeah. It's your connection. yeah. And the the, uh, the the incredible love. Yesterday, I had to get my my one of my dogs uh, sprayed yesterday, and it it oh. absolutely broke my heart. But she's incredible today. It's, it's a keyhole surgery. It's incredible. Well, well they I manage to, really well, don't they? Yeah, yeah. I had to take her to the vet on Sunday because she ripped her dew claw. Oh, quite oh. common in dogs. She's never done it before. I know that. That, Sherry, that was exactly my because when I took oh. it to the vet, he said we're going to have to take the claw off, and I was like, oh, oh, oh use no. And the thing is, we all have to wait outside the vets now, and there's all these like anxious yeah. parents yeah. waiting outside. And then they they brought her back with a little blue band. I have to say, you know, twenty eight oh. pounds that oh. size. So Sherry, yesterday, a little, a little blue bandage, like, look, mum, look, and she, but she's <laughs> not quite afraid. <laughs> I know. Well, Tinkerbell has she's from, her, she's from Murtha. Think, she's from Murtha, think, so she's tough. Yeah, but if you think about, you know, a keyhole surgery, she's had two little tiny little incisions, and she's yeah. up and she's barking. Yeah. And, and vets, vets for life in Serbiston, where I was, were, were so fantastic and so lovely with me because I was, you know, you can imagine the mother. In pieces. Yeah. So, Debbie so was frightened. beside herself. Yeah, I you know. You, you were and beside normally, yourself, Debbie. Oh, yeah. it's, normally you can go in with them, but you can't at the moment. So no, not anymore. No, no. no. So, what, hey, what were you going to ask? Got? What breed do you Well, I, I was going to say, Rhea, that I know that you're a big fan of Andrew Lloyd Webber, and so am I. And I think you, I'm so in awe of everything you've done. I just think 
Oh. You, you know, your career is magnificent. And oh, I just wow. wanted to say, I ask you two things, really. What was the, you know, and you talked about Godspell and you talked about, and I know you're in Les Mis and all my favourite, favourite musicals. What is the, you know, what was the highlight? What was the, the most memorable or most enjoyable? And what would you, and also what would you like to do in the future? What's your big sort of aspiration if, with your you career? fabulous, by the way. I love, I love your you're like turban very normal <laughs> oh thank you very, very, very yeah. often you're often fabulous. they're made out of dish towels today it's actually <laughs> oh, a scarf. Wow, well, yeah. sorry going back to your question thank you thank you has to, pleasure it has to be sunset boulevard oh, of i mean course. of course it was just crazy because i was i workshopped it when i was 24 i just finished doing cats for two years and um andrew asked me if i'd come and workshop his new musical Sunset Boulevard and I didn't really know much about it at the time and I watched the film and I oh, fell in love with the film yeah. and then we spent two weeks down in Sidmonton at his home where he's convert he's converted a chapel in the gardens into a little theatre so um and it's lovely it's got a spiral staircase so my first entrance as Norma was down the spiral staircase you know, it was just Fabulous. an incredible time it really was I was you know I was young and I was just you know it was just a great time um and I knew at that age I'd never get to play, play her, certainly then. And I joked with Andrew at the time saying, oh, I'll do the revival one day, ha, 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 knowing that they always get the big, big stars to play. So I'll never probably get to play her. Fast forward um, 26 years and <gasps> there I am standing by in the wings for Glenn Close at the Coliseum. And a lot of my oh, friends said, oh, why, are you, yeah. why are you taking on that job? You've done all the roles. You don't have to be an understudy. He said, uh, uh, uh. Listen, you never stop learning. I don't think you're Absolutely. only as good as your last show. You're only as good as your last show. It doesn't matter True. what seat you have. You ha you're only as good as your last performance. I said, it's Glenn Close. It's an A-list celebrity. What I can learn just by sitting in a room and watching her rehearse is priceless. Yeah. That would be That's such true. an honor. I, I saw it as an honor as opposed to, you know, stepping backwards or anything. Anyway, and also because I'd been through that year off, it was a way of dipping back into the business, but not with yeah. the big pressure, you know? So no. I was in the background, yeah. quietly doing my homework and, you know, and if I got to get on, that would be amazing. But I didn't take the job for that reason. I took, I took it because I wanted to learn the score again. I wanted Brilliant. to watch Glenn work and I just wanted to be back out there. So on the first day when he said, right, let's, start, let's get going, let's start blocking. I said to yeah. Stephen, yeah, where do I sit? What do I do? Where do I go? He said, come and sit with me. So I literally sat for six weeks and just watched. And then wow. we moved into the theatre, you know, and I watched. It was just fascinating. Glenn was wonderful. She let me in on every rehearsal. And even one time she turned to me and said, I'm having trouble with this. Like, Ria, how would you say this line? And I was like, whoa. Wow. <laughs> in my head, Glenn goes, just ask, get, ask me a line reading. Oh my God, oh my God. So she was really generous and lovely. And of course, when the inevitable happened and I went on it was it was crazy now you almost you know it's, it's I mean I knew I'd done my homework I'd had two blocking calls that was it no call with the orchestra no costume wow. or nothing oh, but God. you know Harry we all know yeah as long as you do your homework you're there for a reason so of as long course. as you know and I was confident by opening night I could go on if I needed to and sadly Harriet will know this the day before Vic Vic Victoria Wood passed away Oh. And um, Stephen, Stephen came to see me in my dressing room to tell me before it hit the press. And we were like, oh, God, it was just awful. So the next day, the morning, I got the call. And I said, Stephen, that's Vic. She's gone up there now and went, right, let's get this girl on. Let's get her on. <laughs> I on believe that. I swear to God. I swear <laughs> to God. And she, you know, you know her. She would have been there supporting me. So Absolutely. it took my nerves away in a, in a way because right. I, before I went on, I thought, this is for you, Vic. I, this is yeah. for you. And it, it made it much more of a, you know, I went out there and did it for her. So it took a lot of my nerves away. And I knew they boo. I, I knew they do all that. But I thought they're not booing me because they don't know me from a, you know. No. Yeah, they don't know me at all. So I said, bread. So I went out there and just sang my heart out. And they embraced me and they took, it was oh. in it's in a night I'll never forget. It's on How YouTube, wonderful. you know, with the blues yes. and everything. And then by the fourth night, there's a recording of people cheering. And by the fourth night, people were ringing to see if I was on on Monday. But, you yeah. know, it was amazing. But then you also oh. have to remember somebody is ill. 
you know yes. and so yes. it's that fine line of not celebrating too much because somebody's yeah. sick and I've, I've been in that position too you don't want to go of course, off. Of course you don't so you have no. to remember because I'm on somebody's ill so it's keeping that you know the, the judgment wow. the press but, and Rhea, everything you know? you've got such a brilliant attitude absolutely a winning oh, attitude yeah. and then really. I got the tour that my payoff was I got to do it myself on the tour yeah so that's that's right. there's always it was that worth, yeah it was worth it all yeah wow darling oh. can I ask you just before you sing your song um, what's the new thing that you're developing at the moment? I've always yeah. loved interior design and mm. I love um, I love charity shops and I love going to old auctions and I love walking <laughs> past a skip and having a little look in there because I love upcycling and things. And then a friend who's an interior designer and another friend's a fine artist is starting up an online um, company we're called Red Dot and it's basically all um, vintage furniture and upcycling and say for instance wow. somebody said Ria I want a set of, of theatre seats red velvet I'll find them for you and I'll go and find them because I love schlepping around oh, and wow keeping. wow so it, it's basically just um yeah vintage furniture and uh accessories and things so I'm I'm it's something I I'm interested in yes so is it is it there now? Is it is it? Can we get? Can we see it now online? No, that we we're about to launch the, the holding page. We, we're called Red yeah. Dot, and because of COVID, we haven't been because we'll probably go over to France because one of the girls lives in France, and there's a lot wow. of great finds over there, and been, you know really unusual pieces yes. and much better than you'd pay here. And then we're going to stage it like on on online like a like a set like a mm. so each page is like a set and everything you Brilliant. see on the. Well, let us know, darling. Wow. Let us know, and we'll, we'll. I will. I will. We'll put it on the website. Yeah. 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 So, darling, will you give us a little tune? Okay. <coughs> now, how do you want to do this? Do you want? I, I literally need one second to turn everything yeah. around. Sorry. Okay. Just say yes and yeah. disappear. Well, yeah. Yeah. Come on, two girls for one for one second while I set it all up. Oh, girls, we'll have to have Rhea back to show us this company. Yeah, no, that's definitely. great. I'm so excited. I love all stuff like I that. I love all that. Yeah. yeah. Well, do you it's know when so I used so to live, I had a house in France and I used to go to all of the, the wonderful junk shops. Yeah, the and, food market. Uh, and they are just, and it's like walking around a sort of a, an incredible sort of, um, well, do you remember in, in uh, Denmark, Debbie, we went to that one and it yeah. was very, very similar. They have them a lot mm. in Europe. In Paris, I was so annoyed that I never had my car with me because every week, they put yeah. things out on the pavement. Yeah. And it was like fabulous chaise longues and yes. you know, shutters yeah. and everything. They do. do. I'll shut up now, talking of shutters, <laughs> and I will <laughs> sing a bit of uh, Chicago all that jazz. Oh. Let's hope that yeah. Yeah. Please. 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 Here we go. Here we go. Join in. Join in. Okay. No. <laughs> Mute us, please, Paul. Can you hear that okay? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm dancing. <laughs> Come on, baby, why don't we paint the town? And all the chairs are going to rouge my knees and all my stockings down. And all the chairs stop. Car. I know a be a spot where the gin is cold, but the piano is hot. It's just a noisy hall where there's a noisy fall and old man. Slick your hair away, your buckle shoes. And all that jazz, I hear the modern dip is going to blow the blues. <laughs> and all that jazz, hold on, hug, we're going to funny hug. I bought some aspirins, I'll let you mind it, dog, in case we shake up and make a brand new start to do magic. Come on, baby, why don't we paint the town and all that chairs? I'm going to lose my knees and roll my stuff in town. And all that chairs. 
Wow. Oh my gosh. Oh. 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 That was absolutely sensational. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Oh. I think I, oh. I want my neighbours. We go back to the theatre. Oh, you've to locked us out. Yeah. That oh, wow. was sensational. Absolutely oh. sensational. Really, really thank really you. Sensational. That set up the weekend. Thank you. Oh, thank you so you. much. When you've got your company up, will you come back and see us soon? Please. I'd love to. I'd love to. And have a wonderful weekend. I think and you, you, Maria. Maria. you <laughs> too. To we Bye. will now. Love to Dotty. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Oh, wow. Oh. That was sensational. I mean, to have oh, that. Amazing, amazing. amazing. Oh. What's happening oh tomorrow? God. Girls, we've just got to talk about tomorrow. Yes. We have got Fallon Sherrock tomorrow. Now she is only 26 and she's mm -hmm. a champion ladies darts player. Ooh, and I that like is rare. So it's I can't wait because I'm a big fan of darts. So I can't wait for tomorrow. Do you play yeah, darts, for those of you, I do, yeah. For those of you who are fans of cooking, on Sunday we have a oh, special... Yes with yes. Bob Barrett from Holby. He's leaving, oh. he's leaving the, uh, the operating theater and he's about to go into the kitchen. Now, I think we're gonna have some fun with Bob. So that's a special on Sunday with Bob Barrett cooking a vegan meal for us. Vegan wow. meal. Yes. Yeah. A vegan I'm meal with Bob Barrett. Vegan. Yes. vegan. So we'll see you tomorrow with Fallon and we'll see you on Sunday. It's every day this week we've gone crackers. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, see you then. Bye, Bye, darling. Bye.